Hello everyone and welcome to Power Playground. This is your host Michael and today I'm going to be showing you all how to make a little bracket for a ATX power supply. As you can see on this particular power supply I have this uh, bracket here and I want to mount this unit underneath my desk. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these two screw mounts I'm going to basically create an L bracket to where I can use these uh, little wood screws to screw it up into my uh, to the bottom surface of my IKEA desk. So what I have to do here first, I have to take some measurements. The first measurements I'm going to need to take are the uh, screw the screw thread th thickness. So they're around like 3.1, 3.5. I'm just going to go ahead and keep them all the same, around 4 millimeter diameter for the uh, screw th thread thickness on all four screws on this side. And then what I'm also going to do is I'm going to measure the, uh, using this side of the caliper, I'm going to measure the length between the screw and the actual power supply itself. So it's about around 2.5 millimeter. So that's the uh, the thickness of the plastic that I want to do for the uh, wall here at least. I want to go ahead and measure the screw head size. These are the largest, so it looks like it's around 8.11 or 8.1 for the screw head thickness. So what I'll do is I'll factor in that particular measurement. And of course I'll add some padding so there'll be plenty of space. I think the bracket what I'll do is I'll do about 11 or, uh, yeah, I'll go about 12 millimeter for the thickness. So that'll be the minimum thickness. And there's not gonna be a whole lot of uh, space in between here. We're gonna need to uh, keep that in mind because what'll happen, as you can see, there's a very small amount of space between the uh, top of the screw head and the top of the power supply. And I wanted to have this surface fit flush with the bottom of the desk. Now as for the uh, relations for the screw size, if you don't already have a diagram, I would use like the uh, your calipers to your advantage. So this one I'd use the uh, out these little uh, inside diameter type measurements here. Yeah, I just need these two screw head uh, measurements here, which of course, I will uh, find, I think I'll find a diagram online how to do that here. But. So that's gonna be about it for our measurement segment here. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip on over to the computer and I'll show you all how I'm gonna model this. All right, got my diagram here and it is just a simple ATX power supply diagram. So pretty easy to follow. Now, of course, as you see, the uh, bottom is where we want to reference our measurements here for our brackets. So first off, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that to the side and I'm going to go ahead and start modeling our uh, part here. Now, first, what I want to do is I want to go ahead. Actually, I'll go ahead and go to part. I'm going to throw in a couple of cylinders in each of these. Say hey, we're already exactly where we need to be with the sizes on these. These are going to be spaced about 138 millimeters away from each other, according to our diagram. So we'll go ahead and I'm just gonna place cylinder 01. So we're gonna go ahead and place on the X axis on that 138. Actually, no, that's 114, apologize. I was looking at the wrong side, so. And then let's see, what is the difference here? Oh, it looks like it is by 10 millimeters. So we are going to go ahead and we're gonna raise this one on the Y axis by 10, actually, we want to go ahead and raise that by 16 because if you notice, it's off the uh, bottom. So that will be, you know, we'll raise that by 16 and then the other one by six. So they're just 10 millimeters difference from each other there. So now what we're going to do is we are going to go ahead and go to part design into our sketch view X, Y, that's fine. Exactly what we want anyway. And I'm going to go ahead and just draw a little uh, shape here. And of course, as with any typical free CAD drawing, you do not want to go ahead and uh, yeah, you do not want to, of course, join or er, join it to the, uh, the zero lines here because things will just start getting weird real quick. You do that. You want to do that at the end of the model or else you're going to run into a lot of trouble. So then let's make sure I always like to make sure and see if everything's connected to each other, which it looks like we're okay. Yeah, okay, everything is showing connected. I remember the minimum measurement we had here was 12 millimeters, so I'm gonna gap these two, to start them out by 12. Now, we can go ahead and uh, we'll gap that by a total of zero, so that'll be our starting dimension here. Do the same here. Hey, there we go, all right. So that should be 
pretty well constrained, except for this particular dimension. So that's going to be 114. Okay, there we go. That looks right. So there we go. We have our basic shape here. This is just going to be the uh, bracket hole area that attaches this to the frame. So, yep, it'll just, uh, we'll have our um, 2.5 thickness wall going here. So now, okay, so we have our basic shape. I'm going to probably like curve it and whatnot, but for now it's okay. So we're going to pad this by 2.5, which is what our wall thickness has decided to be. Now we have another, uh, I just want to, Go to part, go with a square. Let's go ahead and edit that square. We want to make it, um, I think, hey, there we go, okay. So I believe that's uh, on the X position, negative six. There we go. And then let's see here, 2.5, hey, there we go, neat. Okay, so now we have our basic shape cut out here. Oh yeah, we want to go ahead and uh, change our height. Now this is gonna have to be a little bit bigger. Okay, so yeah, I'm gonna make it about 14, actually 14.5 in height. As you notice, this this little area, it's kind of um, what we're probably gonna have, what I'm probably gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to like um, do a little bit of a crop on that. So let's, um, of course we can just go ahead and uh, do something like this, where we have on the X and Z plane and then I'm just going to do like a little cutout. Mm -hmm. There we go. And then let's see here. I want the angle. Yeah, 45. Just a good clean 45. And then we need this part to be at least 12. Then we'll go ahead and pad that bad boy. Yeah, it's fine. It's, it's just a exclusionary piece, so. Okay, so I need to uh, move it a bit on the y-axis. Oh, wow, I was able to actually pad it under constraint. That's kind of weird. Okay, so yeah, that should give plenty of room for that screw to kind of um, be able to go around. I want to go ahead and union these two shapes here first, these two pads. Go to part, union these bad boys, okay. And then we have that. We, I want to go ahead and uh, cut these guys, union them. Okay, so there's my little concept piece here. And I'm going to go ahead and pop in a few more cylinders. Oh, let's see, okay, so axes. I want to go ahead and just uh, do it on the one, the O, do it on the X axis, and of course, good old 90. There we go. Perfect. Perfect. I want to go ahead and um, I'm going to raise them about eight. Should be the halfway measurement for that. Let's see. What is this? Negative five or probably just five. Okay. Don't both in five. Okay. So I want to kind of move this one up to. Oh, that's a little too much. I'm just kind of winging it at this point, <laughs> if you haven't noticed. What's one? That's way too much. What about 80? Yeah, that's pretty good. I'd say that's fine. Typically with like screw mounts, you don't want the screws to be interfering too much in case if you have to undo like one or the other. Uh, let's see here. What's 90 look like? That's better. Yeah, because it's closer anyway, so no big deal. So now I'm going to select the uh, sides I kind of want to smooth out. Let's have, see how she looks. Oh, hold on, does it, yeah, it's doing some weird art, artifacting. Okay, whenever it'll let me select it, I wanna do one of these bo bad boys. Okay, that seems to work. We'll go ahead and uh, round off these here edges. Oh, let's see here, do I want that edge? Eh, I'll, I'll leave that be, because it's gonna be up against it and then I'll just create weird printing and, inconsistencies uh yeah we're i want to go ahead and just go full bore and go three on this baby give it a good smooth edge all right that is good okay so that's that's pretty much it here so um in terms of prototyping yeah it's it may or may not work we shall see so i'm going to save that baby and export it and print it out 
Here's a uh, shot of the actual bracket on the power supply here. Looks pretty cool. Definitely worked out really well here. Didn't have to change any measurements just due to the fact that I use official measurements and dimensions, but yeah, pretty pretty solid uh, little mount here. So that'll definitely work well along with these little tabs just to mount this under the desk. Good deal. All right, folks, got a bit of a uh, bonus here for you. Where I'm gonna show you all how to make a pyramid the easy way. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go ahead and hit uh, X, Z, or Y, Z. Now, of course, you could start with a square and just cut out little triangle shapes from it, but we're just gonna start out with a uh, with a sketch. So we'll do X, Z here, and then let's go to the triangle tool. We'll uh, hit it to where, try to get it as straight as possible so it doesn't freak out when we try to straighten it. So hit the bottom line that's flat against the uh, two axes here. And then we'll hit this uh, little line tool to straighten this guy out. And I'm gonna make this about 35 millimeters in length. So we'll go ahead and define that. So keep that number handy. And I wanna make these, so we'll click these two, we'll click this end, and then we'll hit the uh, symmetry tool. Go ahead and sync that up. And then we'll hit this guy here, that guy, make that zero. So now it is flat and in, uh, in the center, which will be very important for the next step. So now we're going to pad, we're going to 35 millimeter for that. So, hey, we got a pyramid, right? Nope, not quite yet. Let's just go ahead and copy this. Yes, that's fine. Okay. And then we'll go ahead and paste this bad boy. So now let's go ahead and rotate this on the Z axis. Oh. Okay. So scratch copying it because they have some weird rotation shit going on. So. We shall go ahead and go back to our sketch. We'll do a YZ plane now. So as you can see, we've got a bit of a square going on here. So we're gonna go ahead and do a triangle. Same as before, straightened out. So quick, e quick and easy. We can just do this one a little dirty. We'll just do a zero zero. Hey, there we go. Now let's see how what our product looks like. A little weird, but let's go ahead and just do a bit of a. We're gonna go ahead and position this bad boy on the x-axis. Oh, uh, let's see here. Actually, we need to position the sketch. Remember? So let's see here. Thirty-five divided by two. Seventeen point five. So we got these two sketches. So now let's go ahead and go to part and then we'll do our uh, intersect and boom, pyramid. And of course, yep, it's a proper pyramid and everything. Now, of course, I'm gonna be using this as a calibration piece. So I'm gonna stick a giant cylinder in the middle, which will cut a hole in it. And um, yeah, I'm just gonna be using it for a few uh, 3D printing test videos. Alrighty, folks, that's gonna be it here for today's video. I do wanna thank you all for watching. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit that like button, consider subscribing and check out some other videos as well as our Patreon link if you wish to help us out and have a great day.